Who is it that crests over that aureate hill, haloed in the golden rays of a desert sun? Who would I spend entirely too many hours playing on Kenshi? Why, it's the Rejects, of course, an adventuring party with a name so auspicious that I insisted on capitalising it when writing the script on my phone. We have Electo, the leader and the muscle. Conifer, the gang's resident medic and specialist. Boy, the gang's precious little murder machine. And last, but certainly not least, the absolute giga-chad powerhouse that is... Uh, Runt. All of this is to say that I've been anxious to get back into posting online and decided that self-indulgent hive drone art while I wax lyrical about Kenshi was the way to rip the band-aid off. Also hi, editing Hannah here. Uh, my mic broke halfway through making this video and I had to buy a new one, so if you hear some weird changes in quality, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, one thing I found is that I quite like working into sketch layers. I feel like it retains a lot of that kind of personality and texture that comes with some rough line art. Uh, I don't tend to do a lot of clean line art nowadays, which isn't uh, probably a good thing to admit, but it is the truth, and I do think it lends itself well to the rough world of Kenshi. Wait, I need some motivation before I go on. Perfect. Now where was I? Ah yes, Kenshi is suddenly a flawed game, but their dedication to the little touches, the way characters react to others, is it's honestly fantastic. With not a single human in the party, travelling in Kenshi has become somewhat of a game called Who Has to Hide on the Outskirts of Town Because They'll Get Shivved If the Guards See Them? It's fun, or, or certainly interesting. For example, the first time I visited a hive colony, I made the mistake of letting Runt go into town. Uh, big mistake, all the hivers freaked out because he was an exiled drone. Uh, Runt very nearly died that day. Good times. Runt was conceived by just trying to make the smallest hive drone I possibly could, uh, while still making him kind of cute. In my head canon, all of the rejects have been unsurprisingly rejected for one reason or another, and I dislike the idea that he was too small. This was a great chance to study the intricacies that go into a design like this. It's actually quite deceptive in its simplicity. I kept looking at my sketch and thinking, why doesn't this look right? And realizing that there were certain proportions or lines of geometry that were integral to their overall look and design. And speaking of elements that are integral to an overall look and design, you can see I'm playing around with some shirt ideas here and then promptly realizing that I was kind of undoing all of the hard work I just did. So unfortunately for now, Runt does not have much by the way of armor. Please forgive me, Runt. These ribs were especially hard. You might notice that I'm drawing guidelines here, uh, just so I know where the kind of points of the ribs should start and end. I would definitely recommend this if angles aren't working out for you, always draw guidelines if need be. Uh, one of the best things about working in pencil or working digitally with multiple layers is you can just erase these later, or even leave them in just to give a sense of depth. Use what you've got! And with a little bit more cleaning up, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. If we look at the kind of comparison between the initial sketch and then how I cleaned it up and, you know, gave him some trousers, the poor thing, uh, you can definitely see how just a few tweaks here and there, some changes in the line art opacity can really make a difference here. Uh, obviously I'm not an expert, but I think it looks okay. And honestly, just look at these guys, they have such an interesting visual style to them. They're insectoid, from their societal structure of queens and drones, to their head plates, to their spindly little legs, but they are also unequivocally a unique humanoid alien in their own right. They're not too derivative of any one thing to feel like a copycat. 
The choice of colours lends their torso and limb joints a borderline fleshy, gory appearance. There's something very visceral and almost vulnerable about these guys. I absolutely love it. Throughout this colouring process you will probably be able to see that I'm being quite slapdash with how I put colours down, I'm layering things up quite a bit, and that is actually quite intentional in this case. I'm trying to give it a lot of texture, you know. The world of Kenshi is, it's borderline post-apocalyptic, it's deserty, it's hard, it's very Mad Max in nature, and so I wanted to make sure that runt skin and clothing looked like it had been layered in 70 different kinds of dirt, you know? And once again, an old friend is making a reappearance, and that friend is called Painting Over Your Line Art. I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I'll probably only stop saying it at the heat death of the universe. I absolutely love this technique, uh, not enough people do it, it can be a bit intimidating at first, but honestly, it lets you clean up so much without being reliant on your line art. It draws from a lot of traditional methods as well, which I have a bit of a background in. If you've not done a lot of traditional art before, I cannot recommend actually painting in, you know, acrylics, oils, whatever you can get your hands on. It's actually really benefited my digital drawing. So there you go, Hannah's little top tip of the day for you. Take it with a grain of salt. Here I'm adding yellow, pink and blue as a highlight fill colour and shadow respectively, and then switching to an overlay layer. Well, it's quite a subtle difference, it does add just a little bit more dynamism and uh, a three-dimensional element to your image. Obviously, this isn't a substitute for general knowledge of theory, shading, shadowing, all of that. You've still got to bring that in, but it definitely gives a little bit of pop and colour variety, so I definitely recommend that. And really from here it's just about adding details, little ridges to the horns on the side of his neck or whatever the uh, hiver's horn things are meant to be, maybe antenna, scars, scratches, scuffles, all the little touches that make Runt feel like the absolute adventuring legend that he is and not just a random drawing. Though I suppose he's also that. <laughs> And from here it was basically the home stretch. I added highlights, details, little bits of shading I might have missed, anything and everything just to make him pop that little bit more, added a little sparkle to his eyes, all the good stuff. From here it was just a matter of adding a shadow, grounding him in the world and calling it good. And there he is, and what a nice, uh, gentle and lovely character to kind of try and restart this already only slightly started project on. Uh, that being said, I have done a lot of uh, other little bits and pieces projects, just gonna throw those on the screen real quick. Ooh, wow, amazing, very cool. Uh, yes, I'm gonna try and do this project mostly for myself, but hopefully uh, if you got something out of this, you know, leave a comment. Uh, or like and subscribe if you have the time. And thinking of time, I will hopefully see you next time.